Hallelujah. Okay. So we got Facebook going. Now I'll go over to the conference call. This call is being recorded. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Let's get the Lord a hand clap of praise. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Welcome, everyone, to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your speaker, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for being God and being God all by yourself. We thank you for this because of who you are. You're an awesome and wonderful and marvelous God, and we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory and you give you all the honor which is due to God as awesome as you are. And so, Lord, we come this day thanking you for being God. And then, Lord, we thank you for giving us your only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, who died on the cross for our sins and who you raised from the dead. Thank you for his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Thank you for his blood that was shed on the cross for our sins. Thank you, Lord, for his words that he has shared with us through through centuries and centuries, Lord. Thank you, the Heavenly Father, that when you took him home to be with you and sitting at your right hand till he comes back again, you didn't leave us helpless or hopeless, but you gave us your Holy Spirit, God. So we thank you for your Holy Spirit resting, ruling, and abiding with us, living inside us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, God. So we thank you right now for your Holy Spirit being in us, living in us, and helping us to, to, to fight the good fight of faith. Thank you, God, this day for everything that you have done, everything you're doing, and everything you're going to do in our lives. Anoint afresh this day that we might hear your word, that we might study your word, that we might live your word, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Uh, we have a wonderful lesson today. It's a familiar lesson, if you will. Many of us have, have read these passages, but but sometimes when we read passages like this in particular, uh, they, they get to be a little too deep for many people. But I like to look at these same passages that people say, oh, man, that's deep theology, and just say this is just some simple stuff Paul is trying to say. He just trying to talk to some folks that were talking deep but he was really just trying to say some simple things. And so the title of today's lesson is God's Reconciling Love for Sinners. I, I put the word reconciling in there so that everybody can have a big word, but when it comes down to it, it's God's love for sinners. God has a great and awesome love for, for us who are, are, are sinners. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's part of the Roman road over in Romans, the third chapter, he tells us that Paul tells us that, but, but, but this passage of scriptures that we're going to look at today, Romans chapter five, verses six and 11 and Romans chapter eight, uh, verses 31 through 39. These, these passages of scripture gives us an insight into the fact that God loves us and, 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 and his love for us it goes, it, I, I call it a soul love. You know, when, when, it, when it says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Many of us don't understand that word so love. Well, 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 th this is the, I'm going to give you the opposite of the soul love and, and, and not, not really an opposite, but an illustration of it. When you tell somebody that you didn't had a situation and whatever, somebody didn't die in your family or something broke or whatever, something messed up, they say, oh, I'm so sorry. And then when, when they go and tell them the next level of it, you tell, they say, oh, I'm so, so sorry. 
Yeah, yeah. We, we understand the so, so, so sorry. But, but do we understand it when we start talking about God's love is a so love. He, he so, so loved us. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how the fact that God really, 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 really so love us. And his so love for us. His, his really love for us. His, his great love for us makes us more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. So, so let's, let's look at our scripture today. Uh, our key scripture, I'm, I'm going to read it, the key scripture, because that, that's coming from the 8th chapter, Romans 8th chapter, verses 38 through 39. That's, that's our key verse. Listen to it from the message, I mean the King James Version. It says, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor debt nor any other creator creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Christ Jesus, our Lord. So, so the key verse, the key verse is dealing with the fact that, 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 that Paul, the, the, this, this, this gospel globetrotter, this, this man who loves the Lord and know that the Lord loves him, he is persuaded that nothing can separate him from the love of God. And he wants us to be that persuaded that no matter what we're going through in life, no matter what our trials and tribulations are, no matter what our doubts and fears are, we can be persuaded that no matter what, God loves us. Oh, hallelujah. Well, what a beautiful passage of scripture. And so for to make this thing real simple for kids, I, I have my keys for kids. So the keys for kids is God. if God is for us, no man, no one can be against us. And then number two, nothing in this world can, can, can make God not to love us. If we get all of that, get that right there from this message, I've done my job. You understand it. We, you know, we, we good to go. And that's, that's just how simple this lesson is. Many people, they want to, they want to create a whole lot of fluff and, uh, and flowers around stuff. But, but sometimes you just got to say it's straightforward and simple. God loves us. So now when we get into these scriptures, we're going to, we're going to dig into these scriptures because there's some things said in here that really helps us understand God's love. Okay, first, our learning facts for today is to understand that why God reconcile, rec God's reconciliation in Christ is invincible. And that, that's, that's important for people to understand that, that, that God's reconciliation for us in Christ is invincible. Nobody, nothing can break it. The biblical principle we want to explore is to, to uh, explore the, the uh, 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 connection between being justified and being reconciled. And then finally, we want to make uh, 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 daily application. We want to make sure that, 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 that we uh, uh, can, can help someone be changed in their lives. We, 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 we can live our lives better, but to help someone else learn to live their lives better. Amen. Amen. So, so, so let's go to the text and we're going to start at Romans, the fifth chapter, and we're going to start at the sixth verse and we read out of a new, new King James version of the Bible. Uh, as we first get into this, so he says, for when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrated his love toward us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
much more than having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, if, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Wow, that's, that's a whole lot of, that's, that's a good, good, lot deep theology that, that is engrossed in there. And, and what, what all this theology that, that Paul is talking about, he, he wants us to understand that when Jesus died on the cross, he did it for you and he did it for me. And, 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 and it was done in due time. It was in the fullness of time. It was right on time. Matter of fact, for you and me, it was done even before we was even into existence. While we were yet not even born. And then when, when, when you think about how we come into the world and we're already in the world full of trouble, full of sin because we're born of a woman and, and, and Jesus already died for us. He already prepared a way for us to be reconciled with God because before we were reconciled with God, we were his enemies. We didn't do what he wanted us to do. We were going against his will. We were fighting him. I don't know about you. I, I fought God. I didn't want to do it his way. I wanted to have it my way. I, I, I wanted... I want it to be like I was at Burger King. I'm the king of this castle and I'm going to have it my way. That made us enemies against God. And when you're an enemy, you, you, you have to have someone to bring peace and reconciliation. And that's what Jesus did by dying on the cross. And he died for us. While we were still his enemies. That's why when we got on the cross and, and he says, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's, that's why he could say those words. Because he died for us. And you know, you know, perhaps, a, you know, many of us will say, well, I, if somebody ever did something to my child, I'll go all off and I'll do this, that, and other. Don't mess with my mama. I'll give my life to save my mama. Yeah, some folks, you, you perhaps will die for somebody good, but, but Jesus died for us when we were not good. That's how much he loved us. And, and his love was not just in words, but there were in deeds. He demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were still sinners, he gave Jesus. Now that now 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 he gets into this justification, and I I love this word justification because Paul is trying to prove that 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 we're we're justified, justified by what justified by faith, and and and, and faith in what faith in Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, and and because we it, we've been justified just as if we've never done anything wrong. That's what justification means. Paul wants us to understand that, 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 that we've been justified by his blood. And when you think of this, you think of Jesus's, when we say justification, you think of Jesus's righteousness. See, see, we know all of our righteousness is like filthy rags, but Jesus righteousness. Oh, hallelujah. His righteousness is, 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 is the foundation of righteousness itself. What he wants us to understand is that we have been justified by Jesus' blood. His blood makes us right with God. His blood reconciles us with God. His blood bridges that gap between man and God. His blood 
saves us. Just as if we have never did anything wrong. And because of his love, his mercy and his grace toward us, and that blood that was shed on the cross, we're saved. But Paul goes on and he says, well, say, saved from what? We're saved from God's wrath. Because, see, here's the thing. We, 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 when, we, when, we, when we're saved, we, we're saved from the penalty of sin, which is death. When we say we're then going through a process called, that's justification. Then we're going through a process called sanctification. And sanctification saves us uh, 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 to, from the power of sin. And that's what we're going through now. And then one glad morning when, when this life is over and we're going to fly away, we're going to see the Lord. We'll be saved from the very presence of sin and that's called glorification and, and that's the process that we go through it and right now when we're talking about this saving grace about a, of the blood of Jesus that's saving us from the very power with the present I mean the very penalty of sin and when we're saved from the penalty of sin from God's wrath that's awesome part of salvation that's justification that's god setting things right oh i, I gotta take a break here it not not a break from the message but a break a break from from the theology because we got to make it real simple and, and and the real simple way to make this thing is 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 to sing a song that we learned as a little child Jesus loves me, <laughs> this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. That's, that's what we have to grab when we start talking about being justified by his blood and, and we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Oh, Jesus loves us. That's all it's saying. And the Bible tells us so because God demonstrated his unconditional love for us by giving us his son. Verse 10 says this, for when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through his death. Now that, that's, that comes to that point. So now when we talk about his blood, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the cross. That's them beating him. That's them stabbing him in the side and the blood and the water coming running down. But now he says, we, when we were enemies, we were reconciled through his death. That's him going into the ground. That's him being dead and being buried. So we didn't see the death. Now we're looking at the burial. And then he says, now reconciled to God through the death of his son, so much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Oh, hallelujah. That's the resurrection. See, you, 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 you got to understand, yes, his death and his burial is part of the salvation process and, 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 his recon and, and, his, and, and the reconciliation process, but his life, oh, hallelujah, the glorious life. He, he got up out of that grave with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. And so when we think about his death, his burial, and his resurrection, it ought to make us happy. And we can sing, Jesus paid it all. And all to him we owe. Sin and let the crimson stain. But Jesus has washed it white as snow. Yes, he lives. Because he lives, I can face Tomorrow, because he lives, all of my fears are gone. Because he lives, because he lives, because he lives, because he lives. And because he lives, I got a reason to rejoice. 
I got a reason to be happy. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away because he lives. So I'm so, so saved. I'm not just saved. I'm so, so saved. I'm so, so loved. I'm so, so saved. We're so, so loved. We're so, so loved. We're so, so saved. He lives. He lives in us. He walks with us and he talks with us all along the way. That's why his, his resurrection is so important. And so, Paul says in the 11th verse of the 5th chapter of Romans. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord and see Savior Jesus Christ. Through whom we have now received the reconciliation. We got peace with God. We got a relationship with God now because of the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ because we believe in his death, his burial and his resurrection. We have joy, unspeakable joy. We got a relationship with him. He talks with us. He walks with us. Oh, I love you, God. God says, oh, I love you too, baby. And we have that kind of relationship going because we reconcile with him. We're no longer his enemies. We're no longer under his wrath. And so, nothing is greater in this world than for an enemy to become a child of God. When we were God's enemies, he gave us a way to become a child of God. And it's through a personal relationship with him. And now we're going to go to our last part of our lesson, which is nothing, nothing can separate us. Children becoming conquerors, conquerors of love. Listen. Listen. Listen, listen to the text over in Romans, the eighth chapter. And he starts at verse 31. And he raises some questions in verse 31. Listen to what he says. What, what then? What then? What then shall separate us? What, 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 what then shall we say to these things, excuse me, if God is for us? Who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but, but delivered him for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? If it, if it is God who justified, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen who is even at the right hand of God who makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations, shall distress, shall persecution, shall famine, shall nakedness, shall peril, or sword as it is written for your sake, we are killed all the day long and, and we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors to him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Because of Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection. Who, 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 who 
can bring a charge against us? Who, 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 who can, can, can condemn us? Who can, can separate us from the love of God? Don't you understand? We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And so when we go through life and we're dealing with doubt and we're dealing with fears and doubt and fears will come to all of us. Doubt will creep in. Doubt will try to tell us that, that it's, it's not going to be a good day. I, I, I saw a commercial uh, uh, yesterday while I was watching the basketball games and, and, and LeBron Talks about death coming, doubt coming, and, and doubt is like rain. It's going to be there, but it does not matter that the rain is there. You got to keep on going, even in the midst of the storm, because you got to got power on the inside of you to keep you going. He that is in you is greater than he that is in this world. So when we have doubts and when we have fears, when we have difficulties in life, when we're facing pains, financial pains, relationship pains, loss of a loved one pains, realize that nothing and no one can separate you from the love of God. Grab a hold to that love. Grab a hold to that love with all your might. And realize that because you have that personal relationship with God, you're more than a conqueror. And Jesus is interceding on your behalf right now. He's talking to Daddy God about you. Your situation, your circumstance, even before you even know how to pray for it, the Holy Spirit is already praying for you. The question then is, can you trust him? Do you love him like that? Do you trust him like that? Do you hold on to him like that? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but it makes me want to sing. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Jesus' love is so powerful. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. Nothing can separate us from it. So don't ever. I'm just going to say it straightforward. Don't ever be worried about losing your salvation. Don't ever worry about your relationship with God being broken. If you've sinned, don't run from God. Run to God. If you're falling short and you, you didn't pray like you're supposed to pray that day or you ain't studied like you're supposed to study that day or you, you missed the opportunity to witness to somebody you or you did, just don't worry about all of that stuff. Just go to God in prayer. He loves us. And he's not going to let anything come between our relationship. As a father, I love my children. Oh yeah, they don't do everything I want them to do. No, they all fall short, but that's that's what children do. But that don't stop them from being McCoys, my children. And there's certain things I'm going to do for them just because my name is on there. And that's what God is saying. I'm, I'm going to do stuff for you just because you're my child. You were my enemy, but now you're my child. We reconciled because of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. I'm going to let this lesson go because I can keep going and going and going with this lesson. Um, let me say this to you. God's love for us is so powerful that it, that it has saved us and it keeps us and 
it blesses us over and over and over and over again. And I want to encourage you this night, or this morning, excuse me, to accept Jesus' love into your life. It has the, the power to save you. It has the power to reconcile you with Christ and reconcile you through Christ and build a relationship with, with, with God. And no matter what you've done, I don't, I don't care how bad it is. No, no crime, no sin is so heinous that Jesus' blood cannot cover it. And he's waiting on you to give your life to him, to submit to him, and accept him as Lord and Savior. So we're going to pray the prayer of salvation with you. And we believe if you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins, Lord. I believe there's nothing I ever could do that you can't forgive me, God, and nothing I ever will do that you can't forgive me. So please, God, forgive me of all of my sins and come into my life. Come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule in the reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Be a blessing if you want to come over to the overtime session over on the conference call and have a conversation with us. Please dial 910-218-0531. If you need prayer, we'll pray for you. Um, and that's our interaction, interaction or interfellowship. Um, on this uh, conference call. So call in on the conference call. Before we leave, just wanted to say to you, remember God's love is always there for you and be a blessing to others and watch him bless you. Bye-bye, Facebook.